building, this sanctuary, was the family home uh, when they were when they were uh, practicing the Presbyterian faith. And now uh, that it's the Science of Mind Center, uh, they attended the Science of Mind Center, uh, and and has and had moved away, and they're now back for the weekend. So we welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, we're concluding our theme for the month of November, which is Living Everyday Wonder with the emphasis on home. And our topic this morning is welcome to your dream home. Welcome to your dream home. I have a little morning trivia for you, and I want to put this disclaimer in. Uh, this is not necessarily tied into the topic, although as creative metaphysicians, we can find some way to connect it. Um, but it also is in alignment with a part of our purpose, which is to play. And many of you may know that uh, that is one of my goals in life, is, is to play, to have fun, to enjoy life, uh, to take my spirituality seriously, but not take myself seriously. And so the title of this um, trivia is Bad Handwriting. <clears throat> Speaking to a number of us, I see. <laughs> the person in charge of this organization has a salary that is larger than the Vice President of the United States. In Texarkana, you can stand in one of their places of business with one foot in the state of Texas and the other foot in the state of Arkansas. The smallest one in the U.S. is only seven feet by eight feet wide, by eight feet wide while the largest one spans over eight acres. It employs 7.5 million people, including 1,000, whose primary job is to decipher bad handwriting. Their employees travel a cumulative 1.4 billion miles a year, which is the equivalent of 56,222 laps around the earth, 15 trips around the sun, and 5,861 trips around the moon. And if you're lucky enough to find one of their signature products that was made incorrectly, it could be worth more than a million dollars. Can you guess the name of this organization? Now, I don't want any to blurt, anyone to blurt it out. If you're in the, in the congregation and you know it, just jot it down on a piece of paper. Uh, for those who are participating this morning via Zoom, uh, on our Facebook or our YouTube viewers, I ask you to type your answer in the chat in the comment or in the comments section. And then I will reveal the answer at the end of our time together. And I want you to know that while I am doing the talk, I'm not looking at the chat. So if you put it in there, I will not be distracted. So our playtime together continues. As we focus on welcome home to your dream home. And this serves as a reminder that the keys to the home of our dreams is in our hearts and in our mind. Our journey this month has provided us with the inner keys to unlock the possibility and joy of being at home wherever we are. The hero's journey is our journey back to our true selves, one with the power and presence that lives within and around us, our journey home back to ourselves. Now, the hero is not a person, it's an archetype. It's a set of universal images combined with specific patterns of behavior. And remember back when we began the series for the month, uh, we talked about 12 steps on this hero's journey. And, and this is primarily taken from the work of Joseph Campbell. Uh, the journey happens in three phases, the departure, the initiation, and the return. The departure phase is where the child, and the child in this illustration is not bound by chronological age, but the child leaves a place of safety and shelter to embark on their own individual call to, to adventure and to challenge and to the quest of life. 
this generally is an initial reluctance. There is generally an initial reluctance to answer this call. During the initiation phase, which is the second, second group of steps in this journey, the child develops the strength, the character, and the wherewithal to endure the trials and the tests that life offers. And along the way, they develop allies and friends who they meet on this journey. And then in the final trial or the final phase of this, the child slays their inner dragon and is gifted with insight that transforms into the hero, thus initiating the return home. Now, one of the challenges we face along this myth mythological journey is trying to figure it out. And where are we in our lives right now trying to figure something out? We're trying to wrap our intellect around this infinite source that is not bound by the intellect. No one has ever figured it out and no one ever will. And I think once we get to that point where we recognize that we can't figure something out, at least I know for myself, once I realize I can't figure it out, then I let it go and it magically resolves itself. It's like looking for something. Um, when I put something down and, and get distracted, um, what, I, what I have learned to do is to just stop and stand still, return to the place where I started out with whatever the item is that I'm looking for, and there it magically appears. But first I have to stop and focus, letting go of trying to figure it out. We are unique people traveling around the sun on a round object that is called the earth in a unique speck of time. And we're at a unique place always in our lives. It is solely a unique experience. It is not an app that we can download. It is not a map that we can download and call up or go and have printed out. No one in the past or the future will have a manual and sit back and think, I figured it out. So let's go, let's have fun along the journey. Let's, let's um, there was a bicycle group uh, in the Bay Area, it's called Barrier. There wasn't barrier back roads. That was a different program, but it was it was a bicycle touring agency that was based in the Bay Area, and uh, one of their highlights were bike tours in Europe, and they encouraged the cyclists to get lost. Uh, they would provide a minimal map. They would invite the cyclists to get lost because, as they discovered other little villages and hamlets, these became stopping points along the way. And it was an opportunity to not try and figure out where the destination was, but to enjoy the journey along the way. And let's look at a few of our science of mind and new thought reflections. Starting with Ernest Holmes. In Love and Law, he writes, this is one of the great truths of metaphysics. God can become the individual only that God can become through the individual. God can become to the individual only what God can become through the individual. So this is a reminder that this relationship with God, with spirit, with this creative intelligence, whatever name we call it by, is personal. It is an intimate relationship with this divine. Ernest also writes in Can We Talk to God? Always the spirit corresponds to our belief in and our receptivity to it. It corresponds to our belief in it and our receptivity to it. Hence, there is a power within to which each may come, a presence which is light, a spirit which is this guidance. And Holmes says, this is fundamental to the understanding of science of mind. There is a spirit which knows. This is God, the spirit which knows us. It corresponds, it responds, and it flows through us. And then metaphysician Joel Goldsmith in The Master Speaks offers this from the Greeks, know thyself. 
Find within your own being the realization of God as your being, as your substance, as your life, mind, and body. And then you will find that the whole world is free. And so here we are, the final leg of the hero's journey, their return home. And let us be reminded that the person who returns home from the journey is very different from the one who left. And I think if we fast forward this, uh, for those who travel, I, I know when, when, when I have a travel experience, I do return home different from that travel experience. It is enhanced, it is, it is broadened, it has shaped my life in a different way. It has expanded my awareness of what it means to live in the eternal moment of now. The hero is the one who summoned the courage to set out on the journey. And this is the departure phase that we talked about. The hero transcends false limitations in order to return to the essence of their being. So this journey is like a circle. We depart. We gain experience along the way, but we're always coming back home. We're always coming back to the true essence of who we are. The journey includes practicing releasing. We identify and declutter our life physically and metaphorically, letting go of those things which no longer serve us. And this is one of our basic teachings in Science of Mind is to let go of that which no longer serves. And to identify that which no longer serves requires that we spend time in the silence, that we spend time communing with spirit, that we spend time in nature, that we spend time away from the distractions. This is one of the processes of decluttering. To clear our spiritual environment, we examine the areas where we feel like a victim. Any area where there is blame, shame, complaint, or avoidance, is a fertile ground for self-discovery. And remember, life reflects back to us what we think. So instead of shooting ourselves, you know, let's avoid the shoulda, coulda, woulda experiences and ask instead, how can I become more accountable? How can I become more accountable to myself along this journey? And in this process, we recognize that our outer experience is a reflection of our inner experience. And so clearing the physical environment supports clearing the spiritual environment. And I come with this breaking news reminder for all of us that we are spiritual beings living in this human experience. We are spiritual beings living in this human experience. And the journey isn't about becoming someone else. It's about being the best possible version of ourselves that we can be, psychologically and spiritually mature adults. And so what does it mean to be a psychologically and spiritually mature adult along this hero's journey? And this is what I would identify as the initiation phase. Some of the elements of becoming this psychological and spiritual mature adult may include having the courage and willingness to go into the dark caves of our own fears, facing our challenges head on, not ignoring or denying uncomfortable circumstances. You know, somewhere along the way, we got things twisted a little bit in science of mind. I mistakenly believing that Ernest Holmes said to deny circumstances. What Holmes, Holmes did not say that we are to deny circumstances. What he said is that we are to deny their power over us. We do not deny circumstances. We deny their power over us. We recognize that we are not victims engaging in blaming and shaming or making excuses or demanding accountability from others, or waiting for difficulties to magically disappear on their own. Along this journey, we acknowledge what is so, and we are willing to hold ourselves accountable for the circumstances by assuming full responsibility for our individual thoughts, our feelings, 
our actions and acknowledging responsibility and taking action to remedy any false situation that we may find ourselves in. We understand accountability is the key to personal freedom. And we are not attached to possessions, views, or opinions. The person who is becoming a mature adult along this journey understands peace of mind is more valuable than being right. Peace of mind is more valuable than being right. And lastly, but not necessarily the end of the descriptions, psychologically and spiritually mature adults understanding, understand that they are, we are part of a greater whole. We are not isolated little objects floating in this vast sea that's called Earth. And so the hero returns home with insight, with wisdom, and with power gleaned from the journey that is meant to be shared. This accumulation of insight, wisdom, and power from the journey is what Abraham Maslow calls transcendence. And Maslow describes transcendence as being the highest and most inclusive or holistic levels of human consciousness behaving and relating as ends rather than means to oneself, to significant others, to human beings in general, and to other species, to nature and the cosmos. The hero recognizes transcendence as a gift and lives purposefully with a commitment to the greater good the hero lives with an awareness of their interconnectedness of all life and love as a source and substance of that connection. So in all of our various topics that we have covered through the year, they revolve around this central theme of our interconnectedness with each other, our interconnectedness with, li interconnectedness with life and our interconnectedness with love which is the highest vibration of spirit as the source and substance of all that there is. And so the qualities of this mythic home lie in the heart of every human being, unconditional love, freedom, peace, and joy are our spiritual birthright. Heroes recognize their own birthright carrying home wherever they go. The hero's example makes it possible for others on the journey to find home within themselves. Thus, the circle is complete. And so as we go out, as we, depart, as we go through the departure phase, as we go through the initiation phase, we're dropping little seeds along the way. We're planting little, little, we're making little deposits, little deposits of love and grace, and peace, and harmony, and joy, and acceptance, and inclusion along the way. And we drop the seed, we let it be, we fertilize it with our consciousness, we fertilize it with our good thoughts, and we allow nature to do what nature does, and that is to nurture that seed and bring it into fruition in whatever form that it materializes. Thus, we complete the circle, the circle from birth to death to infinity. The circle is complete. The circle is continuous. We take action to make things right, and we forgive as required. And today's affirmation from um, our, our Census for Spiritual Living Member Council uh, developed an app this year. Uh, and I encourage you to if uh, to sign up for it next year. It's 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 um, a daily affirmation app that that you receive via uh, via text. Uh, I I get it on my phone. And the affirmation for today is: I'm at home wherever I go. I'm at home wherever I go. And so our call to action and our life work for this week is to recognize. The power is ours to return to the place where we long for, 
wherever we choose. The power is ours to return to this place that we long for whenever we choose. It is in our own timeline that we choose this. And so claim the keys to your dream home. Claim the trees, claim the, claim the trees, yeah. <laughs> we plant, we're planting along the way and, and, and whatever we plant grows as spirit decides, <laughs> spirit decides it to grow. So we claim the keys and the trees the furnishings and everything else that we want in our dream home, remembering that we are always returning home to ourselves. And so our affirmation for this week is, I am at home wherever I go. Let us say this together. I am at home wherever I go. And now I invite us to come together in prayer recognizing that there is a power and a presence for good in this universe. And it is mine to use. This power and this presence, this one life, I acknowledge as a source of all that there is. How good it is to know that I am one with this source, that I am an individualized expression of this source. And as this is true for me, it is true for all people, it is true for all sentient beings, it is true wherever truth is known. And it is also true for each one that is right here present right now. Each one an individualized expression of the divine. And so as I speak my word this morning, I speak my word with joy. I speak my word in light of this hero's journey that is a continuous circle, continually departing and continually gaining what is required along the way. And oh, I give thanks for that which is in, in, which is expressing in my life, is expressing in the lives of those around, knowing that this expression, that this journey with the so-called trials and tribulations are always manifesting for the highest and best. And so it is that which I choose to see this day. I choose to see only the highest. I choose to see only the best, knowing that only the highest and the best are what is available to me and what is available to all people in all places everywhere. How good it is to know this truth, how good it is to be in communion and be in community with those fellow travelers along the way, knowing that we don't have to figure out the destination. All we have to do is to trust and to release and to not figure out the process. I speak a word of blessing and healing this morning for those who are experiencing life challenges that may be appearing as a health challenge, may be appearing as a transition of a loved one, whether that loved one is a human being or as a dear friend of mine says, a little person in a fur coat recognizing that all life is valuable, all life is precious, all life is to be honored. I speak a word of blessing this morning for those who are seeking the right to livelihood, knowing that the answer is yes and amen, and in the stillness and the silence of their own heart, they are guided to that place where right action takes place, recognizing that each one is a success in everything that they encounter and embark upon. I speak a word of blessing this morning for places where people are gathering, whether on this day or any other day or time, recognizing the spirit is not bound by time and space. Those who are gathering in the name and nature of the one love, this highest vibration that connects all, recognizing that there are many paths to the truth. There are many paths that take us home. Home is where we are. Home is the place where the heart is. And so I bless all who are gathering in the name and nature of the one love. Giving thanks for this, releasing my word, knowing that my word has set a new cause in motion. I release it now into the activity and the action of love and the law, knowing that it is done and it is done well. And so I just allow it to be. 
And I invite you to affirm it with me if anything I have said resonates by saying, and so it is. Just a reminder for those who are here in the center and those who may be viewing us online, the ministers and practitioners of the Monterey Center are available to support you along this hero's journey, to support you in celebrating the joys and the excitements of the journey, and to support you in prayer and in spiritual coaching, to navigate through the seeming roadblocks and the detours, to see the beauty in those places where there appears to be only darkness, to know that the light and the love of God is always surrounding you. Our contact information is on our website. You may also find it in our e-newsletter, and I invite you to subscribe to our newsletter so that you're aware of what is going on within our center. And now it is time to share our abundance, to participate in the circulation of the spiritual, spiritual truth known as money. You know, sometimes we dance around this. We say, you know, it's time to, to share from our abundance, to share from our overflow. Let's just call it what it is. This is our time to be in and to share the spiritual experience called money. And for those who are here in the, in the center, there is a donation box on our hospitality table. And for those of you who are viewing online, uh, we will share with you the information to donate to the center. Let us say together now our abundance affirmation. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And so you may contribute to the center uh, by mailing in and our address is on the screen for you. You may text to give and that number is on the screen, 831-246. 8, I am unmuted. You may text to give at 831-246-9684, or you may make a donation through our website, uh, org. Something is happening with my computer? Okay, okay. I'm getting a message saying I'm muted but I can hear myself, so <laughs> that could be dangerous. You know, in fact, I was, I was, in a, uh, I was at a medical appointment recently and um, I, had, I had asked for uh, some additional uh, towel, Kleenex to, uh, you know, to clear up a space where, where they had uh, done a, a little, little test. And, and so I'm just kind of thinking out loud, I said, well, well, if I go this way with this and I go this way with it, I'll clean it up. And, and, the, and the attendant was, was kind of looking at me. I said, well, oh, don't mind me. I talk to myself and I also answer myself. She burst out in laughter. She said, you would fit well right in this office. <laughs> it's all part of this play of life. And so just know that I love you and I appreciate you. Um, and now let's see. Did ah someone did get the right answer uh, for our trivia for our trivia question? It's the United States Postal Service. <laughs> and so for our for our uh, Facebook family and those who are viewing on on uh, our YouTube channel, we invite you to come back next week as we begin our December theme, which is community. And the message is longing to belong. So we've gone on the hero's journey and we made this circle back home. And now we look at community and where we fit, where our place is in that community. And so we say to our, to our virtual community, God bless you, we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you.